Alex Taver. Very nice. Is next evening wear. Very nice. Having no choice is no fun. That's why at Wendy's, every hamburger isn't dressed the same. You get your choice of fresh toppings, fresh tomatoes, fresh lettuce, fresh onions, cheese, bacon, and more. Having a choice is better than not. Is next swim there. Choose fresh. Choose Wendy's. Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings. I'm your host, Bladed Tech. The US burger chain Wendy's might have been having a little fun at the expense of the stodgy Soviet Union in the 1980s in their advertising, but it was a fact that when it came to commercial technology, the communist giant often trailed the West. So when Hewlett Packard introduced its revolutionary calculator, the HP 35, in 1972, not only did it cause a seismic shift in Western personal computing capability, it also delivered a shock to Soviet bloc engineers as they realized that the HP 35 leapt to Western engineering forward several years. The Soviet Ministry of Electronic Industry immediately bent to the task of replicating the capability of HP 35. After three years, they finally released the Electronica B318. That model provided similar functions featured in the HP 35, but HP had already developed better calculators. So a programmable model, the B321, similar to the HP 65, followed 1978. Finally, in 1985, two years after Hewlett Packard manufactured its final non-LCD calculator and the terminal successor to the HP 35 line, the HP 34C, Electronica produced the MK61. While researching episode three, I discovered the role Electronica played in Eastern calculator technology, mirroring HP's role in the West. When researching episode three, which covered the history of the electronic calculator, I became interested in electronic calculators. HP's 1972 introduction of its iconic model HP 35 scientific calculator and its storming of the computing world was covered in episode three. A link to episode three can be found below. It seemed only fair to review an Electronica model to see how it stacked up to HP's offerings. To that end, I started looking to acquire a candidate. Soviet-era calculators are readily available on eBay, but you generally have to order it from a seller based in the former Soviet Union. I chose an MK61 from a seller in the Ukraine. It took nine weeks to navigate the customs and postal services of both countries, but it finally arrived. Relax and enjoy the brief, updated BTM video mashup. And then let's take a look at what we've been sent. of the used working MK61 scientific calculator on eBay is maybe a fifth that of a working HP 35 and a tenth that of a working HP 34C. That didn't stop me from trying to bargain with the seller, but left the door open with a make offer option. This was futile as the seller fended me off by pointing out that the calculator was not expensive to begin with and that B, if I want a lower price, he could leave out something like the power supply or the instruction manual. Properly chastened, I meekly mashed the buy and now button and let the machinery of shipping get underway. 
The MK61 arrived in a padded envelope with plenty of shipping tape applied. As promised, the unit arrived in its original box, which was still in pretty good condition given its 40 year plus manufacturing date. In fact, considering this was the Soviet Ukraine we were talking about, the box was downright fancy. Patched neatly in the box was a full leather case containing the MK61, the AC adapter, a getting started booklet, a schematic sheet, and a pretty beefy instruction manual. Actually, all the materials are written in Russian, but translation software makes quick work of this sort of thing, and undoubtedly a persistent searcher will be able to find English translations online. The calculator accepted standard AA sized batteries and powered right up. This was great as I avoided having to haul out my bulky 120 volt to 220 volt transformer, and I could test the calculator out right away. The buttons in the MK61 are logically laid out with second and third function keys colored in the same fashion as the HP 34C. Computations could be easily entered on the keyboard and the green vacuum fluorescent display was quite readable. So how does the MK61 compare to the HP35 and another similar calculator, the Texas Instruments SR50? Note that the Texas Instruments SR50 was designed specifically to compete with the HP35, so it does not have the additional function keys available on the HP34C or the MK61. The MK61 is the largest of the three calculators at 6.5 inches long by 3 inches wide by 1.5 inches high at the back of the display but interestingly enough, weighs a little less than the other two at 8.1 ounces with the batteries installed. The case build quality is about the same between the three calculators. The larger case size of the MK61 seems to be related to the VF display, which takes up a lot more space than the displays in the HP35 or the SR50. The quality of the keys on the SR50 are similar to the MK61, and that both models fell somewhat short of the HP35 or HP34C key quality. The really only important distinction is that the HP35 and the SR50 were designed 11 and 12 years before the MK61 respectively. Thus in 1981, two years before the MK61 was introduced, the HP34C, the last of the VF display scientific calculators from HP, had already been replaced by the LCD display based HP15C, and the TI-68, the last of the thick profile scientific calculators from Texas Instruments similar to the SR50, had been replaced by the LCD displaced TI-55-2. Both were superior in form, fit, and function to the MK61. So which is the better calculator? I think that depends on your personal preference. The SR50 features algebraic notation rather than reverse Polish notation of the other two. The MK61 supports standard alkaline batteries instead of the proprietary battery packs used by its Western counterparts. And the MK61 has a green display, while the HP35 and the SR50 have a red one. Texas Instruments TI-8X graphing scientific calculators dominate the U.S. secondary and post-secondary school market. We reviewed TI's first graphing calculator, the TI-81, in Episode 9 and compared it to 21st century models. A link to Episode 9 can be found below. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the MK61. If so, click that like button. YouTube places particular importance on subscribers. So to help us meet those requirements and to let us know that you want more of these types of episodes, click the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video 
Episodes 3 and 9, the VTM channel and the MK61 can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. And if you wish to support the channel in an extra way, click on our link to our Patreon channel. Thanks for watching. Gentlemen, would you choose hamburger A from Wendy's, made fresh to your order, or B that's made ahead so you take what they give you? They choose B. It reminds them of hamburger they love in Homeland. But wouldn't they like to taste the delicious Wendy's hamburger? They choose B. It reminds them of hamburger they love in Homeland. But they seem to prefer A. What are you deaf from hearing? They choose B.